again, this is John Wild here to give you another look at vintage action figures. And this time we're going to be looking at the world's mightiest superheroes, the Mighty Crusaders from Remco Toys, 1984. In 1984, Remco Toys produced eight action figures, four good guys and four villains called the Mighty Crusaders. This was possibly to compete with Kenner's superpowers and Mattel's Secret Wars action figures. Only action figures and rack toys were made. This toy line has no vehicles or play sets. Let's talk about the Mighty Crusaders background. In 1965, to mirror the success of Justice League of America and Fantastic Four comic books, Archie Comics and former Superman writer Jerry Siegel and Justice League of America's artist Mike Sierkowski created the Mighty Crusaders No. 1 in November 1965. Archie Comics was previously known as MLJ Magazines and comic books in the Golden Age in the 1940s. Using MJL's magazine heroes from that bygone era, the Mighty Crusaders team was created. The Mighty Crusaders originally appeared in Flyman Comics number 31, and the series The Mighty Crusaders only ran for seven issues in comic book Silver Age of the 1960s. Revivals of the Mighty Crusaders occurred in the 1980s, which most likely encouraged the production of the action figure toy line. It is to be noted that the comic book writer Alan Moore was inspired by Golden Age heroes to create the graphic novel masterpiece The Watchmen. Now, to look at the figures in package. Interestingly, the back card art was produced by Spider-Man co-creator Steve Ditko. It shows four good guys and four bad guys with background information on the characters. Card fronts are all the same, except for the name of the characters. There were two different card lengths that were produced. Each figure came with accessories, which were often shared with other characters. Also, each figure had an action gimmick, the Mighty Power Punch, which was a spring-loaded arm. Lastly, each figure's shield had a built-in whistle gimmick. Now, let's look at each figure individually. The Shield. Real name, Joe Higgins. Secret identity, FBI agent. The shield has super strength and the power to leap great distances. His body can withstand 2,000 degrees of heat. His flame-proof costume also protects him from harm. The shield first appeared in Pep Comics number no. 1, dated January 1940, and was created by writer Harry Shorten and Arvis Irv Novick. The Shield's origin is that his father was a chemist who was working on a super strength formula. When German spies saboteured his experiment, a terrible explosion followed, which he was blamed for and jailed. Joe Higgins continued his father's work, knowing the truth of these circumstances. He perfected the formula and when applied to certain areas of his body and exposed to x-rays, granted him superpowers. The areas of his body exposed to the superpower chemical inspired his superhero name, The Shield, or in an acronym, Sacrum, Heart, Innervation, Eyes, Lungs, Derma. Shield. He donned a patriotic costume due to increasing tensions in Europe and his want to gain revenge on the Germans who framed his father. Taking a look at the figure, stars and stripes appear on his chest, arms, and legs. He has a blue mask open at the lower face and the top of his head. His accessories included two different types of pistols and a belt holster. He also comes with the signaling shield whistle, which for this character is very appropriate because he carried one. Let's get a good overall look at the figure on card. Up next is the web. Real name, John Raymond. Secret identity, police scientist. The web relies on wits and fists to battle evil. Acting as a man of mystery to psychologically inspire fear into criminals everywhere. The web's first appearance was in Zip Comics number 27, June of 1942, created by unknown writer and John Casson artist. John Raymond, whose brother had criminal leanings, studied criminology to become a college professor in this field. His first adventure had him use his newly created super alter ego to rescue a woman from Japanese terrorists, subsequently becoming married to her after she learned his secret identity. He had a short-lived crime-fighting career, and then he settled into married life, 
but occasionally he would return to crime fighting in his later years. The Webb has created a high-tech battle suit to help in his crime fighting efforts. He was also an expert in Taekwondo. The figure has green and yellow accents on his costume and a Webb logo on his white belt. He wears a cape that looks like a spider web. He has similar accessories to the shield. He has two pistols and a belt holster. His signal shield has a web accent on it. Let's get a good overall look at the web on card. Our next mighty crusader is the Fox, and here's his power data. Real name, Paul Patton. Secret identity, freelance photographer. Sworn enemy of evildoers, the Fox has turned his body into a living weapon using karate and other martial arts, along with his natural stealth and cunning. The Fox's first appearance was in Blue Ribbon Comics in June of 1940. He was created by Joe Blair, writer, and Irving Hassan, artist. Paul Patton was a star athlete who became a reporter for the Daily Globe newspaper. Using his alter ego, the Fox, he became a crime fighter to help aid his career as a reporter. A miniature secret camera on his belt takes pictures of his exploits, who he then sells to his editor girlfriend, Ruth Ranson. The Fox has no superpowers, but is a highly trained athlete. The Fox is dressed in a blue costume with yellow accents. The logo for the Fox is on his chest. He has pointed ears on his mask, and his eyes are hid beneath yellow lenses. His accessories include a pistol, and a holster, and a shoulder-strapped rifle. The Fox logo is proudly displayed on his shield. Let's get a good overall look at the Fox on card. Our last Mighty Crusader we're going to be looking at is the Comet, and here's his power data. His real name is John Dickering. His secret identity is scientist, researcher, he has the ability to burst into flame and fly like a living comet. He also has the ability to vaporize anything he gazes upon, forcing him to wear a protective visor. The comet first appeared in Pep Comics No. 1, January 1940, and was created by Jack Cole. He is possibly the first superhero to die in the line of duty. After an adventure, the comet was ambushed by vengeful mobsters who he had sent to jail and was shot dead. His origin is John Dickering discovers a gas when injected makes his body density lighter, enabling him to leap great distances. But after repeated injections, John finds side effects in the treatment. If he crosses his eyes, a powerful beam is created that will vaporize all things. To protect the innocent, John Dickering destroys his gas formula and creates a glass visor to protect against accidental discharge of his gaze. Donning a costume, the Comet used his newfound abilities to fight crime. The Comet's adventures didn't last long in the golden age of comics. The Comet has a red and blue costume with orange visor accessory. The costume is adorned with moon and stars. His accessories included a rifle and a strapped shoulder holster. The Comet's logo appears on his supersonic signaling shield. Let's get a good look at the Comet on card. After researching the Mighty Crusaders, I couldn't help but notice the similarities to other superheroes. The Shield, who one would think is a Captain America ripoff, was actually created months before this now legendary superhero. The Web shares some traits with the Batman. The Fox, like Superman, has a career in the newspaper business. Interestingly, he uses a belt-mounted secret camera, like a hero that would come out 20 years later, Spider-Man. The Comet shoots a ray from his eyes, just like Cyclops from the X-Men, but years before its publication. In regard to the Remco action figures, at first glance, it would appear that the Mighty Crusaders are a cheap answer to more popular superhero toys of the time. And that would be half right. Yes, the Remco Mighty Crusaders use an action gimmick like Kenner superpower figures. 
And yes, Remco Mighty Crusaders used a secret signaling shield like Mattel's Marvel Secret Wars figures. But the Mighty Crusaders themselves are not cheap knockoff superheroes. In fact, they predate many popular Marvel characters and superpowers and origin stories. I understand that these aren't the best looking action figures in the 1980s. Their body proportions are off and the sculpting is very childlike. The card art is pretty generic and bland. The accessories didn't fit well in the figure's hand and were shamelessly repeated throughout the line. The mighty punch action and shield whistle are really dumb features. I bet many a parent in the 1980s told kids who owned these figures to stop blowing the damn whistle. But in the end, it's Remco. What did you expect? They were the masters of inexpensive licensed rack toys. These are charming figures in their cheapness and using characters that had similarities to more popular heroes most likely improved their sales. These aren't hard figures to find carded and are not too expensive to collect due to there were only eight of them. The Mighty Crusaders are a forgotten toy line about forgotten characters. This most likely didn't help sales in the 1980s for most of these figures retail for $2.99 at stores. As an adult collector, I'm drawn to the less popular toy lines that I missed out on as a child, and the Mighty Crusaders are near the top of my favorite off-brand toys. This has been John Wilde. I would like to thank you for watching my video. Please like, share, and subscribe to catch my latest uploads. And until next time, wait, I know I didn't get to the bad guys. Well, there will be a part two to the Mighty Crusaders saga, where I'll review these figures. So stay tuned! To a full card. What am I doing? Oh, you son of a... Got it!